Hello, all Ingress TV viewers. We have published our first research on the Swedish company Hexagon, and today I'm here with analyst Pauli Lohi to discuss the company. Hello, Pauli, and welcome. Hi, Pia. So, first off, can you explain what Hexagon does? Well, uh, Hexagon is a global uh, diversified technology company. Uh, it consists of several different businesses as a result of uh, almost 200 acquisitions in the past two decades. Uh, what unites these businesses is that they aim to improve efficiency in, in various industries um, through digitalizing um, dif uh, different uh, uh, industrial processes that are not very easy to di digitalize. Um, uh, the business includes both high-tech sensor technology like, like radars, lidars, um, uh, lasers, satellite positioning, but also software. So the split is roughly 40% hardware, 40% software and 20% services. Okay, so quite versatile, yeah. but all concentrated right around the digitalization and, and exactly efficiency increases. Um, so what are Hexagon's main markets and customer industries? Well, it, uh, it, it's a global company and, and uh, it's uh, due to the diversified nature, it has multiple different markets. But um, it splits its uh, business into two business areas, which are uh, geospatial uh, enterprise solutions and uh, industrial enterprise solutions. So in the uh, geospatial uh, business area, there is a uh, large uh, customer segments like surveying or construction infrastructure. And these, uh, these are more kind of um, open environments where you use aerial imaging or satellite imaging or um, uh, combine big amounts of data into uh, maps or, or use like 3D uh, Im imaging and uh, that, that helps these, these industries. There's also uh, software for the public sector, uh, safety solutions, uh, uh, solutions for the defense and, and, and marine sectors and also for the agriculture. So it's, 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 it's a broad, broad setting, but uh, uh, yeah. Then in the industrial enterprise solutions, it's, it's more focusing on, on closed industrial environments, which are much more controlled. And uh, there the large uh, customer segments include, for example, car and electronics manufacturing and, and also the energy sector companies. Okay. So, um, as you said, the company has carried out several acquisitions over mm. the years. Um, do you expect this trend to continue in the future? Well, for the background information, the, um, the company's largest shareholder, um, Melker Schörling, uh, acquired Hexagon in the late 90s and um, has transformed the company completely since then. Uh, back in the 90s, the company included several low value add businesses that were divest divested mm -hmm. uh, in the early 2000s and uh, the company acquired uh, more, more kind of high-tech um, uh, businesses uh, to replace the old ones and, and uh, developed them and, and acquired more and so on. So this, is, this has continued uh, since, since then and, and uh, uh, over two decades. So that's the backstory. So I believe that uh, the acquisitions will continue in the future. There's different type of acquisitions. You may expand into completely new business area or, or you may complement your current businesses with smaller acquisitions. Mm, I think that the company is currently so large and, and diversified that um, there probably won't be uh, such huge single acquisitions that would change the company's nature as much as those um, in the past when the company was much smaller. Mm. Uh, uh, acquisitions um, of, for example, Lega Geosystems uh, uh, back in 2006 uh, r transformed the company uh, very, very thoroughly. But, but uh, probably in the future, uh, new, new business areas, new cro growth opportunities, probably more in the software than, than hardware. Mm. Yeah. So 
So probably acquisitions, but not at the same scale and then to completely change the company as, in, as happened in the past. Yeah. So um, Hexagon's corporate governance was criticized earlier this year. Uh, does this still burden the company or has they found a solution to rectify the situation? There was this uh, social report uh, this summer uh, that accused uh, uh, that the investment company owned by the main owner of Hexagon and, and some other uh, company insiders, uh, the accusation was that their, their front ran an investment that Hexagon made into, into a uh, manufacturing software company called Divergent. Uh, the company uh, said that actually it was the opposite, that uh, first, first they invested like the Hexagon and uh, afterwards the, the uh, investment company owned by the insiders mm. also invested into the same company. However, to, to, to um, prevent any, any misunderstandings in the future and, and to align interests, they, they promised that they will never invest into the same companies again. Uh, so they also uh, promised to, and actually today proposed two more independent members to the uh, board, board. So I think they have taken action to improve the trust between uh, uh, investors and, and, and uh, the company insiders and, and the interests are aligned. And, uh, and also, if you think about history, the, the company has been uh, developed very, very well and, 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 uh, and I think the main owner and, and the key insiders have made a very good job in the history. So probably it is this that they have done so well that they maybe forgot to uh, maybe adapt the, the some some structures in the company and and now there's uh, now when they are bigger there there's more talk about it and now they have to change it finally but but i don't see any uh, fundamental problems in there yeah good so a uh, bump in the road so to say and then it has been resolved to yeah to prove that that yeah they have taken action gonna, yeah yeah good um so what are the cornerstones of the of hexagon strategy uh, well, they, they focus on high value added businesses and, and uh, of course uh, improving efficiency in, in various industries. Mm, they, they like to build comprehensive end-to-end -end customer uh, offerings so that they can sell the same customer uh, many different products. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 in the past the sales split was much more tilted to hardware, but uh, in the past decade, they have uh, focused more on the software side, where there is more devel development and more growth opportunities. And, and this is also, they have a principle that they want high, high margin growth. So they want buy businesses that improve the profitability of the company over time. So that's, that's one, one uh, principle too. Um, they will definitely need to continue high investments into R&D and, and, and also want organic growth beyond, beyond the MTA. Um, the company has in the history been quite decentralized and, and uh, as a result of a huge number of acquisitions there, the structure has been quite sprawling and there has been uh, like uh, lots of, for example, Hundreds, hundreds different premises around the world and so on. Mm. So now they kicked off a rationalization program this year and uh, they seek, seek uh, savings of uh, or, or efficiency gains of uh, some 3% of sales by, by 2025. So now they want to reduce the overlapping functions and premises and, and uh, maybe get more cost synergies between these different businesses. Yeah, all right. Um, and what are the expectations for Hexagon for the next few years? Well, there are still uh, considerable cyc cyclical elements in the company's business because of the dependence on end markets like construction or manufacturing. Um, and, and of course, the company also has recurring revenue of 40%. So there is also elements of stabili stability and, and continuing growth. But uh, the growth has been very good this year, despite uh, the macroeconomic slowdown. Um, the growth has been boosted by organic innovation and, and also the couple of uh, software company acquisitions in the past years that are growing fast still. 
as part of hexagon. But I still expect that there's, there could be some softness on organic growth in the coming years. The, the histor historical organic growth has been uh, roughly 5% per year for the past decade or for the past five years. And, and this is the third year in a row that the organic growth exceeds that, that historical level. So, so we believe that uh, the slowing economy could, could burden the growth mm. in, in next years and we expect organic growth to come back to 5% uh, in 24 and 25. So uh, we are a bit more cautious than consensus. Uh, we are 3% below EBIT on for the next year. And, and uh, we expect uh, sales to continue growing at 5% and, and profitability to improve because this um, more high margin businesses grow faster than, than, mm. than low margin. So the mix, mix uh, improves and so the EBIT grows some se seven to eight percent per year. Yeah, so some softness, but that's natural in the, in the market they operate and also in the yeah. current economic environment. I think that's yeah. almost every company. <laughs> is they in the same so far they have uh, done uh, very well yeah. still, but we are a bit cautious. Yeah. And uh, one final question, what does the valuation look like? Well, uh, if you look at the earnings based multiples, they are below historical levels, uh, maybe some 10%. Um, and uh, the EV EBIT uh, with reported e EBIT uh, for the next year is at 18, uh, when the long term level has been at around tw 20. Mm -hmm. So I think this is pretty fair value currently, Pre fair valuation level like the interest rate levels have, have uh, uh, increased and, and uh, that has cut the accepted valuation levels in the market and, and also other companies with uh, cyclical elements or, or exposure to hardware sales have, have um, their valuation levels have suffered. So I think that's, that's, that's correct. And, and uh, uh, with our bit cautious estimates and, and uh, slightly below the consensus, we don't find that positive drivers uh, mm. right now, why, uh, why we have this reduced rating now yeah. in the initiation. But, but the company will uh, kick off, uh, will, will uh, present the CMD, Cap Capital Markets Day on 7th December. So okay. then they maybe can reassure us or, or other investors with their uh, growth plans and also the efficiency program. Yeah. Yeah. So all in all, quite an interesting company and more to come with the CMD. Hopefully we learn a bit more. Thank you, Pauli. Thank and you. And if you're interested in the company, please go read the report. You can find the link below. Thank you.